Michael Nagy here with Jiggy Jag TV and DiscoveringBands.com, and I'm here with Coyote Man. How you doing today? What's going on, man? Just chilling. So you want to uh, tell us a little about the band? Uh, yeah, sure. Um, basically, uh, me and the guitar player, Augie, we grew up in high school together uh, back in the early like 2000s, and we've been in a bunch of bands over the years. Um, and actually, our uh, original bassist, Renee, he, uh, he recorded on the first album with us, and we went to high school with him as well. Um, but all through, like, high school and just out of high school, we had, uh, we had a couple singers. You know, we played some covers, we, and we had some originals, too. Um, but I would say probably about 2005, 2006, we just started um, creating instrumental songs. Uh, we never really had a singer that fit our style of music. Um, so we kind of just went with... Uh, just jamming instrumentals. I mean, we had so many like parts and parts and parts, and then that kind of went on uh, over the years, back and forth. And then um, back in like the summer of 2015, we met up together and we're, and we're like, "Well, let's jam again. Let's see what happens. You know, if if it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out. If it does, it does." So, um, and obviously it did. So we uh, were playing for like a whole year from, from 2015, 2016. And we came up with came out with our first album in 2017. We kind of just told ourselves, well, we owe ourselves an album at least. And ever since 2017, we've been playing shows nonstop. Um, and now we're uh, in two weeks from today, we're coming out with our sophomore release, uh, Recognition. So we're pretty excited about that. Cool. Now, what style of music would you consider yourself? Um, you know. <laughs> uh genre names drive me crazy um but i mean i guess i would i just tell people we're like instrumental progressive rock instrumental metal um yeah it, i i guess in that realm i guess post rock you know however you want to call it but we are instrumental so sometimes people who listen to us for the first time they're like why don't you guys have a singer but it's like well we're instrumental so um you know, uh, listen to us as if we're a soundtrack to your favorite movie. That's what kind of band we are. <laughs> cool. Now, I know you guys are an instrumental band, but would you ever um, maybe add in a guest vocalist for a track or two? We we would love to, actually. Um, and we, uh, we actually did a song um, before our first album. We did a song uh, uh, with this lead singer, Marcus. He's the lead singer of this... Um, uh, band Relative Ash. Um, they were, we grew up listening to them and they are from the Chicagoland area and we actually got to become friends with him, um, Marcus Harrington. And uh, we did a song with him, um, but we just never released it. Um, so uh, it was a really cool experience working with a good singer like him. Um, but in the, in the future, um, I, we're we're open to work with a with a really good singer, you know, if if we had uh, the right song for the right singer. Um, so yeah, we'll see what happens. But it's definitely I could see that happening in the future at some point. Now, being an instrumental band, you have a lot of emotions that come up. What would you say? What emotions fuel your music most? Um, you know, uh, that that's the thing about music in in general, you know. Um, especially if you take every band and you take their lead singer out of it and you just listen to the music. Um, obviously, it's, it's all about the tone and the emotion. Um, you know, I'm, uh, we're really big on, like, soundtracks and stuff, you know. So there's always, like, specific scenes you might remember from your favorite movie, you know. But when those scenes happen, you always recall or remember the, the music that's going on, you know. Because that's, that's really what's make you know gives you an emotional feel or if you're scared or you know what or if you're laughing you know there's so many emotions uh just with music in general um so we we always uh you know again i think like i look at my at, at our at our first album more of like a horror movie kind of soundtrack it's more like darker it's very riffy a lot of riffs um a lot of parts um i would say with like our new album coming out in two weeks um it's, I would say it's more of like uh, an apocalyptic feel. Um, and it's kind of funny because, you know, the titles of the songs and everything, it really 
kind of goes with with what's happening now in society with uh, the coronavirus and everything. And I think this new album is very fitting um, of what's going on. It has more of a apocalyptic evil presence, I guess you would say. Um, I would say like uh, there's like a real there's some dark heaviness to it. But it's 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 heavy in a very beautiful way, I guess I can put it. So, you know, I, I hope that the people that understand our music, they understand it. You know, um, I think, you know, especially when it comes to musician or to, to musician, you know, they understand, they feel it. And and Augie's guitar playing, he has a lot of uh, solos when his solo comes up to me. That's almost like our singer for that part of the song, because his solos are um, they're very dramatic and beautiful. And there's just something um, really cool about that, that, you know, why why we make the music that we do um, and why we're, I would say, different um, from a lot of other stuff. But obviously you hear inf our influences, too, with certain parts. But, um, you know, we're we're fans of all music. But, um, yeah, you know, really for for, uh, for people listening to us for the first time, you know, we're the type of band to put on your headphones, turn off the light, light a candle or something and kind of just kick back and relax and just listen. Um, you know, our, our, each song is kind of like a different chapter. Kind of, it, it brings you into a, a different emotion, I would say, into each track. And people that will actually listen to the whole album, you know, they'll understand it. Because nowadays, you know, people, they'll just click on one song and then they're over, you know, they're over it. I'm, I'm the type of person that, you know, I still listen to vinyl and CDs. I'll put that on and I'll listen to the whole album. I don't skip anything, you know, I want to... You want to get the feel of the whole vibe. And uh, I think that's, you know, we want people to um, to to just hear us out and listen to our tones. And hopefully they'll they'll understand it, you know. And we hope uh, people really, like, we just hope people enjoy our music. Because instrumental bands are kind of hard to grasp for some people, I think, you know. Because they're used to to, to lyrics and, and vocals. So, um, but at the same time, that, that's what makes us different, too, so. Now, I know you're a Chicago band. Do you just play in the Chicago area, or do you do full tours? Yeah, we, uh, we've we played a lot of shows in Chicago, I would say, the past three years. Um, but last summer, we did do our first Midwest short of short run tour, or whatever you want to call it. Um, it was just like four or five days out of state, and we just played like in Michigan, Wisconsin, and Indiana. Um, but we've only really played in the Midwest. We haven't done any um, big, long tours yet. I mean, we're... We're still only a local band and we're still growing, but, um, you know, we're hoping this year after all this coronavirus business that, uh, you know, eventually we could get back on the road again and we would love to get out, uh, to West coast. Um, but again, you know, financially and everything, uh, it's going to take a little bit of time to do that, but, um, yeah, the goal is still to play as many shows as possible. So yeah, I'm hoping, uh, we, we, we go out a little bit fur further to the West coast and the East coast at some point too. So. Nice. Now, how are you guys handling this whole quarantine time? Uh, <laughs> well, it's, it's it's definitely some interesting times we're living right now. Um, we, we, we have a practice spot right outside of, of the city. Um, so me and Augie, the guitarist, we're always writing new material. We already have a batch of new songs um, that we're really excited about that we'll definitely record on our next record. Um, and we actually... Uh, we're we're in a process. We have some we have a fill in basis at the moment. Um, our last our last bassist um, he left the band. I would say back in like uh, September. Um, so we've been working with a new guy for the past couple months, and he's been going. It's been going really well. Um, but yeah, I mean we're not playing any shows, but the good thing right now is we're we're releasing new music in two weeks, and we're still practicing as much as we can weekly. Um, so yeah, we're still creating music, which is really good. I mean, I feel like any band right now. If you got the time to make uh, new music and more ideas are coming, the time is now to do that. <laughs> I feel like we're going to see a lot of new music after all this. Oh, a lot of mo most definitely. I, I would say a lot, a lot of releases will probably be by the end of the summer and this fall. We're going to probably see a lot more albums coming out for sure. Now, how did you come up with the name Coyote Man? Uh, um, you know, there's nothing really uh, big behind it. Um, we kind of want to leave it up to speculation, I guess, for people, however they want to look at it. Um, 
uh, we kind of just it was just uh, you know the pick of the hat we had a couple names in mind and it just kind of kind of came to mind um there's actually actually a cool uh native american folktale about the coyote man as well if you want to google that uh which is pretty interesting um but yeah all in all we just kind of came up with it and uh it kind of just stuck with us so cool now if people want to find your music online look you up how do they do that well, you could find us pretty much on every single platform, uh, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, all at Coyote Man Band. Uh, we're streaming on Spotify, Bandcamp, SoundCloud, uh, iTunes, um, YouTube, uh, you name it. Just type in Coyote Man Band, and uh, we're pretty simple to find. And we'll message you back pretty quickly if you have any questions or anything like that. We're, we're on the internet a lot, especially now. <laughs> And you got some creative music videos on YouTube. Yes. Oh, th yeah. Thanks a lot. Yeah, we have a couple videos out there. Um, that was one thing, uh, you know, um, that we were kind of lacking, I would say, a couple years ago. You know, we'd be playing shows and people would be coming up to us after the show and they'd be like, hey, I looked, I searched for you on YouTube, but couldn't really find anything. And, uh, you know, we only had like one music video out then. But, yeah, now we got a couple videos out. Um, we got some live stuff out there. So uh yeah we're uh the videos we got out right now like autonomous and majestic vixens they were really fun to put together um especially majestic vixens because basically that video is like a horror movie so i'm, I'm a big horror movie fan so I, that was uh that was a really fun time filming that video in particular what type of horror movies do you like oh man uh we could talk hours and hours about that uh you know obviously i would say john carpenter is up there one of my favorites you know i mean you know, he did Halloween, of course, but I would say, you know, like The Fog, um, Big Trouble in Little China, um, even though that's not really a horror movie. But, uh, you know, I mean, especially now, uh, I'm just going and <laughs> watching as many horror movies as I possibly can on TV every day. I'm big into slasher movies, anything 80s horror, you know, um, big into that stuff. So, uh, yeah, um, I, I, I could go on and on about horror movies. There, there's a lot out there to pick. Um, yeah, I could tell the influence of the video. I, I like that video. Yeah, yeah. And actually, um, the first track on our self-titled album, uh, 1155 Almost Midnight, the very beginning of that track is actually a scene from The Fog. Uh, at the very beginning, uh, this, this guy is telling a, a, an old ghost tale to these kids. And that very first 30 seconds of that song is from The Fog. So if you didn't know that, that's where it's from. Awesome. Yeah. Well, it was good having you and talking to you, and everyone looked them up. Thanks, man. Coyote, man. We got new stickers, too. Check it out. Check it out.